911, what is the address of your emergency? Basically what I do is I am a 911 dispatcher as well as a radio uh, operator. I deal with uh, officers, ambulances, fire. Uh, we dispatch for all of them in our county. Okay, what is your name? I see your name up there a lot. What's your last name, Susan? Smith, what's your phone number? Day to day is very unique here. You never know what you're going to have when you come into work. Every day is different. It's one of those careers where, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You walk into a shift and you can have, you know, the cat stuck up in the tree the, the whole shift or then you can have that call and then the next call you get something completely serious and your your mentality just changes from, you know, wow, I, I just, you know, took something that wasn't as emergent and so now my, I have to up my game to take this emergency call and, you know, give my best to this caller because this person really needs my help and uh, I think that is something that I also love about it is just like not knowing when the phone rings what kind of call you're gonna get. You'll either be answering a 911 call and talking to the fire department and EMS or you'll be talking to the public on non-emergency lines. A lot of times we uh, deal with uh, car accidents kind of things like that. Uh, we talk to law enforcement, uh, IPD, and the county, state police, and the villages in the county. Yeah, it's a privilege to help people, uh, to be able to be there in their time of need. You know, when people call 911, it's not because it's their best day. You'll either get an extremely violent call, or you'll get a call that is very mild, and it could be back to back, and it's kind of juggling that, um, where it could be so extreme, you just took a really serious call, and then the next call is like your neighbor, or person complaining about their neighbor's garbage in their yard and it's just very quick and you have to think quick and you got to move on. I was an Ithaca College grad with a bachelor's in communications with a, with a study in film production and then one day I took a job as a medical dispatcher at a local ambulance company and the more I started dispatching ambulances and medical calls I got a love for it so I decided to pursue it further and jump to fire, police, and EMS. I wanted to help people. That was my goal, and I see this as a very unique way of doing that. Even though I'm not able to see people face-to-face, -face, you're still interacting with people 24-7 when you're here. I knew that I wanted to be in some kind of law enforcement field. Um, I didn't know that I was going to be a dispatcher. I was trying to be a, a police officer. Um, I tore my ACL, and I came in, and I was asking for a different job in this kind of field where I can help someone. I didn't know how I wanted to help. I just knew that I wanted to help uh, people and I'm very passionate about that. Um, and they told me about the position as an emergency dispatcher. And uh, I thought it to be very thrilling and very exciting. And uh, it is very helpful and very rewarding at times to be able to help people. You walk in, uh, we basically get our assignments for the day. Uh, they tell us if we're going to be uh, sitting as a 911 telecommunicator or as a radio operator uh, with the city or the state police and the county and the villages, or you'll be talking on the radio with fire and EMS and answering 911 calls. There's three desks uh, that we currently handle at the moment. We do fire EMS and uh, that person also is the first person to answer the 911 calls that come in. Um, then there's the IPD, the Ithaca Police uh, Dispatch. Uh, they answer the non-emergency lines. They also answer emergency lines as well. When the uh, fire dispatcher is tied up on an emergency call, they are the second person to answer the line. And then the county and state police uh, and the villages you deal with answering the non, uh, the non-emergency lines with for them. The fire calls and the EMS calls are very important to get out because, you know, for someone who's having a medical emergency, it's important to get that ambulance going because if they are a critical patient, then it's important to get the ambulance there as quickly as possible. So Airport, fire, rescue, bangs ambulance going to the intersection of Route 13 James and Warren Road. The, the fire side, if you have a motor vehicle accident or a um, or motor vehicle accident with entrapment, I should say, or if you have uh, 
a structure that's on fire, it's important to get the fire department toned out as soon as possible so that, you know, because time, time matters in both cases. Confirmed vehicle rollover with uh, multiple ejections. When you first get hired on, no one expects you to know everything when you get uh, through training. A lot of it comes with just time of being here and uh, being in that seat and uh, experience. The only thing they can give you is give you the right tools, the proper training to talk to these people, the, to get the information out of them, to de-escalate situations, to be able to communicate and talk to people even when they're irate, even when they're uh, in a very elevated state where it's a state of emergency. Every call it's very important to stay as calm as possible because the people on the other end of the line, especially when they're in the middle of a very serious emergency, they need someone on the other end to be calm and collected because if you're not calm, they're not going to be calm. Hey. What do you have? Um, so we got a uh, car upside down at 13 and Warren Road. Uh, officers are on the way, ambulance are on the way, fire department has been dispatched. It's just one of those things that you, you're sitting at your desk and then that phone rings and you answer it and this person's really in need of help. So when you get those kind of calls, um, you know, you're trying to remember each and every question that you're supposed to ask so that you can get the most and the most information that you can get for your responders because at the end of the day, you know, we're we're the eyes in the sky for all of our first responders. So, you know, what you know, we're the first people to see what, you know, they're not seeing yet because they're en route to the call. So we're getting all the information so that when they get there, they know what they're getting themselves into. So basically you're the first first responder. You're the first first point of contact. You are the very first incident commander until someone else takes over, until someone is physically there. By the time that an officer gets there, if you're doing your job correctly, that person is now in a better state than they were when they first called 911. I feel like with this job, it's a lot of, you're in the background. Um, every once in a while, you get a thank you. We, of course, don't expect it, um, but when you do, it's very rewarding. I find a lot of joy in helping people and making their worst days you know, just a little bit better if I can, because, you know, if, if you're calm and you're talking to them and you're getting them through it, then they'll be calm. It is very rewarding on the days that you actually get to assist in saving someone's life on a day that is one of their worst.